Yo, what up, Flame City family? How's it going? It's time to go live and make a great dinner. And I hope you guys are ready for an epic dinner because this is gonna be really, really easy, but super delicious. My man Art is on the camera. My man Brian and Zeno are right here. We just got them back from the market and I'm chilling, you guys. This is gonna be fun, casual, super fun cooking. Um, Really cool because Art and I had a busy day. We just got back from filming two grocery haul videos. We went to Target, or Target, as I like to say. Let's see if everything's going good here. Okay. It only came off my phone a few seconds ago. So I still have that here. And so we got back from Target. I'm looking good here. And uh, then we went to Fresh Time Market, did the grocery haul there too. Luckily for us, both Fresh Time and, uh, and Target are like down the street from each other. Went really well. Now we're gonna make dinner. So here's the menu for tonight. I'm super excited for it. Um, hopefully, let me know how the stream is going, by the way, you guys. Okay, um, Daphne just said hi. Let's good. see who else is online. Okay, yeah, keep leaving comments below. Let us know who's here and let us know if you can see the video really well. Uh, here's the recipe for tonight. We're gonna do oven roasted branzino, which is a Mediterranean white fish. It's flaky, it's really mild, it's delicious. They always have it in stock at Whole Foods if you wanna grab it. Uh, with the branzino, we're gonna stuff it with ginger, lemon, herbs, salt and pepper, oven roasted at 400 for about 20 minutes. With that, we're gonna serve this guy. Does anyone know what this is? Hint, it's not ginger. It's a sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke. It's really delicious. It's kind of like an artichoke met a potato and we're gonna pan sear it like a steak in ghee, yum. Oven roasted for about 20 minutes and take it out, put some more butter and baste it. It's gonna be unbelievable. We're gonna saute all, maybe almost all that spinach in more ghee. <laughs> this is becoming a very indulgent dinner. Ghee, tons of garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper, red pepper flakes, and then maybe if we have time, I'm gonna make a salsa verde. I didn't know I was gonna do all this work. <laughs> what am I doing to myself here? We're gonna make a salsa verde to drizzle on top of that fish. So. We got some people in the house. Leave a comment below. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know what you're making for dinner. And if you're ready to see some cooking, I wanna see that thumbs up button explode right now. I wanna see some hearts on the screen. We got Michelle from Virginia. So I, Wilmington, North Carolina. North Carolina, nice. Tokyo, Australia. Oh, nice. Tokyo and Aussie. I'll see you in Sydney in about two weeks. Um, everyone say hi to Art too behind the camera. Art says hi too. We got Lily from LA. We got Ohio's here. Barbara's from Michigan. Uh, nice. DMB Dave Matthews. Uh, let's see here. That city. Nice. There we go. All right, Germany, Northern Ireland. Awesome, you guys. All right, let's get rocking on this recipe. So in front of me are two Mediterranean Branzinos. Cooking a whole fish could not be any easier. And it's way cheaper than buying the fillets. When you buy fresh fish, you want to make sure a couple things. Number one, when I smell it, it doesn't smell like fish. If it smells like fish, then what is it, Art? It's uh, not going to be in your dish. It's not going to be in my dish. It's old. It's been sitting there. I don't want that fish. And then look in the eyes. All right, let's take a peek in this guy's eye like a lover. I haven't seen more beautiful eyes than that. Exactly. You want it to be a beautiful, clear eye. That means it's really fresh. So this is a fresh brand. You know, they always have them at Whole Foods, and they're about $12 a pound. Each one of these is a pound. It makes a wicked, wicked dinner. Who else is on the stream? Here we got first person who got it. Good for you. We got uh, Qatar. Jasim is here. We got Christina from Washington. Indiana's in the house. Very cool. You guys, we got the super chat feature going too. If you want to help support the channel or see your comment uh, featured, you can use that super chat. But we're going to season these fish right now really, really nicely. I'm going to take some kosher salt. And this Saturday, you're gonna learn about my new favorite kosher salt, which is this art. It's real salt. Redmond real salt from Utah. It's completely unrefined, unprocessed. And then I'm gonna crack over some black pepper. And the fish people clean the fish for you, but that means there's a pocket in there for flavor. And we can get a lot more flavor and seasoning in there. So why don't we take some lemon. Oh, this guy's been to 94 Dave Matthews Band Show since 1996. Are you serious? Dang. Dang that's, I haven't been to like 10, I think. That's amazing. Good for you, homie. Laura says, I can't cook or eat anything that has a face on it or a back. They can cut the head off for you if you want. But I like to see my prey. Okay? So let's slice some lemon and stuff that right 
inside. That way while the fish is cooking, it's kind of like steamy and getting that yummy citrus flavor. Let's take some fresh ginger. Just really aromatic, nice stuff. Then we'll take some fresh parsley. This, guys, this is going over two weeks now. If you haven't heard my new parsley hack, when you get home, you cut the ends off the bottom, you put it in a glass of cold water, put the bag over the top, it'll stay in there now for two weeks. It started to turn a little yellow, which means it's almost done. But to make herbs, fresh herbs stretch that long, that is pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so that's it. Just doing that. You know what, let's throw a little red chilies in here too. So I want to go for that Mediterranean vibe. Denmark's in the house. Denmark? We got we got everyone here. How cool is that? This is the beauty of the live stream, right? No matter where you are in the world, we could be hanging out here. So keep leaving comments below. Let me know where you're watching from. We got Boise, Idaho, the home of the russet potato. Or if you're in England, you call it the jacket potato. Yeah, isn't that good? Lila, that's a great parsley tip. So, hey folks, share this link on your social media. Like right now, I got one hand on the camera, and the other one's going to be posting this on nice. the feed. So, yeah, yes, uh, share. Tell your friends, get them on the horn. Let's get some more people. Let's see if we can break our record from last stream. We have 444 art. That's correct. Let's see if we can get 500 to 600 people on here. A little more salt there. Then we'll take the lemon wedge here, art, and we'll just stuff it in there along with some red chilies, some parsley. A couple pieces of ginger. Now imagine this roasting in the oven and having a nice seasoned fish with all those yummy aromatics there. It's gonna be wicked. So a little more ginger, a little more lemon, and some parsley and some chilies. Now, I would be remiss not to add a little drizzle of olive oil on top of that fish before it goes in the oven. I mean, it is a Mediterranean Greek fish. It's only nice to make him feel at home and drizzle some olive oil on there. So I was thinking about doing a recipe from our cookbook today, but this one actually sounded really good. We haven't had fish, but we're gonna be doing a lot of recipes, you guys, from the new Keto Meal Prep Cookbook, which you, yes, you have already made a number one new release on Amazon, Raise the Roof, but the link is down below. If you haven't checked it out yet, we would love your support. Buy the book, share it with your friends. It's gonna have 125 plus low carb keto meal prep recipes that are the bomb. We're talking the best collection of low carb recipes and I would love your support in buying that. All right, so make sure the fish is not touching so it can roast evenly. Now we're gonna pop this in the oven for about 20 minutes. If it were summertime, I would do that on the grill. Oh man, the skin gets so crackling and delicious. Um, phenomenal. But otherwise in the oven, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay, let's do a little more cleaning. Who else we got in the house here, Art? Let's see. Uh, let us know where you're from. I saw Texas earlier. Oh, Republic nice. of Texas in the house. Art's a former East Texas Former Texan. That's right. Good times in Texas. We got him back. We got him back to the great state of Illinois. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Branzino is new to me. Just started seeing it in the grocery stores. Oh, Luz, try that out for sure. It's delish. So somebody was asking about the whole ginger aspect and how that didn't seem Mediterranean. Are you combining flavors here? Yes, I'm combining flavors because I love ginger. It's very aromatic, and I think it plays off of the parsley and the uh, lemon really, really nice. But it's totally optional, right? If you have dill, chuck it in. Seattle's in the house. Nice. So guys, these are Jerusalem artichokes aka sunchokes, and they grow underground. They're a tuber, and I'm gonna treat it just like a steak. So I'm gonna have them, we're gonna pan sear those in a hot cast iron pan, which I'm preheating behind me, then oven roast it with the fish. And what happens is it gets caramelized and nutty, and it is really soft and jammy. And what's gonna gild the lily even more is that after they're done, we're gonna take some butter and some garlic and bathe the sun chokes in those, in the pan. You said you're gonna treat these as a steak? Yes, I mean I'm gonna like sear them in a hot okay. pan and okay. then I'm gonna roast them. But where these you, are great. Where do you get Jerusalem artichokes? Um, they always have them in the winter time at Whole Foods. They're like $4 a pound. They're a little pricey, but I'm telling you, they're great. They're not the most keto friendly, but they are paleo. But I'm telling you guys, if you want something that's healthier than a potato, this is what it's at. It's kind of like, imagine an artichoke and a potato made sweet, sweet love, 
and had a culinary baby, this is what they have. Ah, baby artichoke, and she's so cute, right? So that's delicious. You can actually eat them raw. You can make a wicked soup out of this, and it'd be great. But the way we're gonna do it now is taking my cast iron pan, it's gonna preheat it just above medium heat, and are we gonna do ghee or what? Of course. Maria says she's lost 12 pounds uh, on keto watching Flav City, and she, I think she said her child likes it, and if she can just get her husband to like it too, then it'll be a major win. Oh, uh, nice, Maria, congratulations. Keep it up, you guys. There is no better way to lose weight, to reduce uh, arthritis, inflammation, lower your risk of diabetes, and uh, high blood pressure than the keto and the paleo diet. Obviously, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I believe in it. There's documentaries on Netflix right now called The Magic Pill. This is a healing diet that will make you feel good. And it's going to make you lose a bunch of weight, right? Art and I don't call it diabetes. What do we call it, Art? Diabetes. 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 Wilford Brimley. Wilford Brimley. Or so Wilford or Winford? <laughs> a little bit of... Want me to come over there? Yeah, come on over here. All right. Don't be shy. We're going to do like 75% ghee and a little bit of... Make that avocado over right here. So ghee already has a high smoke point. Why are you cutting it with uh, avocado? I'm cutting it with the uh, avocado because I wanted a little more oil in there and I thought, you know what, why not cut it? Okay. But I was gonna cut it initially with olive oil just to give it that nice fruity flavor, but I'm out. Somebody else just said 30 pounds lost with keto. Hey y'all, can we give them a little like thumbs up on that? Because that's a big deal, guys. 30 pounds is a huge deal. So preheat the pan. Uh, do you think ground venison is a good substitute for grass-fed ground beef? Um, I do, but it's even more lean, so you have to be super careful it doesn't dry out. Now check out what I do here, Art. I want to season these before they go in, so I just do it really kind of roughly. I'm just going to drizzle over some olive oil on the board. Don't even worry about it. Pinch over a little bit of kosher salt, because while they're searing like a steak, I have to season them. And then a little pinch of, or a little crack of black pepper. And then rough them up. And then do I know if the pan's ready? No, but if I take one and it makes that noise, it's ready. So be careful with the heat here. If you go too high, they're gonna burn. It's really all about getting a nice golden brown crust and then chucking it in the pan, cut side down. Little commentary for all you out there on the net. Uh, you're not picking this up here, but ghee in a hot pan smells delicious. <laughs> yeah, you guys. So, our tell everyone the difference between ghee and clarified butter. Please. Ghee is like a clarified butter that you take in uh, to a darker color and remove like all the solids from it, and uh, it's got a golden nuttiness to it. Yep. It does have a nuttier flavor. Clarified butter is what you normally eat with like lobster. And ghee goes another step beyond that. What brand of ghee do you recommend? Somebody just asked. Uh, this one is phenomenal. So from Thrive Market, they make that organic grass-fed ghee. Um, if you use my promo code, which is, I think, thrivemarket.com slash flavecity. If you don't want to buy it at Thrive Market, I would just make your own using Kerrygold butter. So to prevent a nasty cleanup later on, you throw it on the spider guard. Ruth Reddy just asked, what veggie is this? And it is a Jerusalem artichoke. Yes. So let me explain to you all real quick. If you want to make homemade ghee, which I highly recommend, I just have this in the pantry when I'm feeling lazy. Take two to four sticks of Irish Kerrygold unsalted butter. Bring it to a pot over medium heat just to simmer. Let it cook the bare simmer for about 10 or 12 minutes. Once the bubbles start popping and all of the white milk solids have floated to the surface, kill the heat. Pour it through a strainer, the milk fat separates from the milk solid, and that's ghee or clarified butter. It's so good, and it's much cheaper than buying a lot of them at the store. The solids float to the bottom, don't they? Or fall to the bottom. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the milk solids burn to the bottom. Yep. But actually, some come to the top, too. Okay. The burned ones go to the bottom, and the ones that don't burn go to the top. You can scoop those off, strain them, and it's absolutely lovely. All right, so that is doing its thing. Branzino's in the oven. If you haven't done so yet, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you're making for dinner. And if you're just joining, we're making oven roasted branzino, which is a Mediterranean white fish from Greece. We're making oven roasted sunchokes, AKA Jerusalem artichokes. 
and we're going to make some sauteed spinach with garlic and olive oil, and we're going to make a salsa verde. I make it seem like it's so easy. We're just going to make this and this and this, but it is easy. I'm telling you, it's easy. We get to hang out and have a good old time. So I'm going to preheat my brand new Le Creuset pot. They were so nice, you guys. I tagged them on my Instagram story the other day, and they sent me the new color for the uh, spring. This is a uh, sea salt Dutch oven. So that was really cool of them. Now for the spinach and garlic, I use a lot of garlic. So let's chop up maybe like four to five cloves. Who else we got here? We got Atlanta cooking with Jifty. Kimberly chicken thighs with Alabama white barbecue sauce. Oh, good call Kimberly. That recipe is gangbusters good. Here we got somebody watching from Berkeley, California, and having leftover jerk chicken. The jerk store called Art. <laughs> Running out of you. <laughs> Running out of you. So, uh, sorry, these names go by so fast, so I apologize if I miss your name. But the question was, hey, I missed the beginning of the episode. Question about Branzino. Does it have a mild flavor like flounder? Or I guess is it a harsh fish flavor? How would you uh, describe question. the taste? It's very mild. It's mild like flounder or sole. And it's absolutely delicious. It's not too delicate. Like cod, that would fall apart. It's really, really good. So, once again for the spinach, I'm going to put in a dollop of ghee. And this time, since I want to harness that Mediterranean flavor, I'm going to get a bottle of olive oil here and put that in soon. Where'd you get that olive oil? Uh, this one, I think. Someone gave it to me. Okay. I'll use the really good olive oil to garnish with. This is more of a cooking olive oil. So it's nice to have two fats in there. So we're gonna saute the garlic, some red pepper flakes, and a little bit of salt and pepper, then get a ton of spinach. Now spinach is one of those things that you guys, it looks like I'll be making a lot, but this amount of spinach, if I cooked all of it, Art, would wilt down to literally like a large handful. It's crazy, this is 15 ounces, and we just filmed the video for the, it's 16 ounces actually, we just filmed the video for the Target grocery haul. The Whole Foods organic spinach is such a better deal than Target. Remember Target Art was $4 for 10 ounces of organic. This is $5 for 16 ounces. Amazing deal, you guys. That's why we make these videos. You have to know where to shop and get certain things. So this has to do its thing. So uh, I'll just throw in a question here. I see that you're putting olive oil in the pan to begin with. Yes. Doesn't garlic usually burn? Yes, but there, that's the only vegetable or the only kind of aromatic for this dish. So I actually want to get it slightly golden. And then as soon as the spinach goes in, the moisture will break the fry. Does when you put the garlic in determine how you're going to cut the garlic into like small or big pieces? Um, yes, I think this one I actually want uh, little chunks that you bite into. Okay. So it's going to go in the beginning and then it, it infuses that flavor into the oil and into the garlic really nicely, okay. into the uh, butter. Now, how's these guys doing? So they're sizzling away, but we're not getting color yet. So let's wait. I'm gonna raise the temperature slightly on that. Garlic smelling good. Right. But that, I mean, don't you love the fact that like all you have to do is throw a little bit of garlic in a pan and it smells amazing. Let's pinch in a little bit of salt here. And then I want to add a little bit of heat there. So. Let's grab some chili flakes, and that'll infuse the butter and the oil with heat. So this recipe was actually given to me like in my teenage years. There used to be an Italian restaurant that my family would go to in Highwood, outside of uh, Chicago. Uh, it was called Little Italy. Okay. And we knew the owners, and they had the most amazing buttery olive oil spinach like this. So one day we asked him for the recipe, and he's like, there's an absurd amount of butter, an absurd amount of garlic and an absurd amount of olive oil in this. And it, that's all. That's all it is really. It's just sauteing the garlic in the oil and fat, getting a bunch of spinach in there, a little heat from red chilies, and it's all about seasoning at the end. Salt, lemon juice, and then more butter if you need it. That's it. Super easy. So look what's going on there. See how the garlic's getting a little toasty right there? Now is the point that I reach for my organic container and I throw in a ham. Little Italy is good for two things, organized crime and food. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? 
<laughs> I missed the name. The name goes away so fast. That's funny. So I can't add all of it at one time because it really adds up. But if I let it cook for about one minute, then I can get in there and add some more. And Arba said, hey, are you worried about the garlic burning? Well, no, because listen right now. See, I broke the fry and I'm releasing the moisture from the spinach, which brings us to trivia question number one. I just added a bunch of spinach and I'm gonna add a lot more. Do I wanna salt this spinach now? Or do I wanna wait until the end and salt it? Why? Answer below and why. I'll keep an eye on the answers. Yes, thank you. I wish we could do like a real-time poll. Alan Floyd says later. Okay. Cassandra, Mario again, salt as you go. Ooh, we got mm, two different answers here. Uh, Lisa, that, thank you very much, just pre-ordered our book. Big round of thank you for you, appreciate that. Uh, let's see, we got uh, yeah, Cassandra says salt as you go. Uh, let's see here. Wait until the end. When it cooks down, you can add an appropriate amount of salt. Simply mite, salt at the end, uh, Stefan. It draws out too much water. Later, later, alligator. 90% of y'all got it. It's later, later, alligator because, number one, um, I'm not too concerned about it pulling out moisture. I am concerned about over-salting because if I salted this quantity of spinach now, I would have a tendency to over-salt it. So wait until the end when it's really cooked down and you can see the quantity. It would actually be okay to pull that moisture out because it has to cook away eventually but there's no way I can gauge how much spinach is going to be left in here to salt later on. And trust me, I know from experience, as Chris Farley would say in uh, Billy Madison, I know from experience. No, you don't. Uh, yeah, you don't. Yeah, but some guy, you know, salted it and did it wrong. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Uh, you can imagine what it would be like if he did, though. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, let's see how these guys are done. No yelling on the bus. Yelling yeah, a little more color on here. But I want more. We're just going to wait. That's, That's kind of like nice. what I want. That's a really nice one. And they'll keep cooking in the oven. It's a pretty crowded pan. So I'm going to give it another couple minutes. Just hit 209 people on the broadcast here. 209? I want 509. Keep sharing. Yeah, sharing is caring. Yeah, last week, last week we had 444. Where are my homies at? Where are my Flame City crew at? Um, so, like I said earlier, Art and I just got back from Target and Fresh Time Market. We did two grocery haul videos today. We were super nervous about getting caught by security, but we didn't. High five! Um, so, those will come out in the upcoming weeks. Target was awesome. Basically, that video is going to be a big lesson in reading the back of the label. Reading ingredients, because the front of the label is so misleading. And Fresh Time Market is really how to navigate that store without spending a fortune. Because Art said, man, this place is more expensive than Whole Foods, right, Art? That's right. And it can be. And you have to know what to buy there. Okay, so I'm going to turn the heat down. I'm going to add a little more oil to this. Just not as juicy as I'd like it to be. And I think I'll add a little more spinach. You got a question here, Bobby? Do you think Whoa. you're... <laughs> you think your thick hair is due to your genetics or your diet? Oh, wow, what a question. Um, I think obviously primarily it's genetics, but I also think my diet. I eat a diet that's very rich in healthy fats like avocado, olive, and coconut, and I think that does make my hair like Sofia Vergara-esque head and shoulders, right? But that's just me. Or as Billy Madison would say, silky and smooth. <laughs> silky. Shampoo is better. I go out first and clean the hair. Really? <laughs> All right, wow. so now I can see it cooked down a little bit. So I can add a little pinch of salt here and some pepper. But isn't that crazy, you guys? We just put in like a bunch of that and it cooked down to literally nothing. That's how much is left. Yeah. Yeah, we pretty much used 12 to 13 ounces. That's crazy. I think these are ready to go in the oven. That looks nice. great. That looks amazing. So look at that. By doing that, we do just like we do with the steak. We caramelize and create a ton of flavor. So let's grab my oven safe glove. Folks, it smells really good in here. This one, good. And then we'll just pop it in the oven with the fish. Oh, no, I just kept it. Oh, it works. Woohoo! Fish is looking good. Got my brand new oven here. And then I'm going to switch this over here and put it on a low heat. If you haven't, 
gotten one of these yet, get it. The oven glove is heat resistant and it saves my wrist from getting burned. I kept getting burned over and over, especially around the holidays. I'm like, dude, enough of those silicone little things. Oven glove is where it's at. So this looks great. Um, pretty easy, right? We're like, just have three things in the process of being made super easily. Simply me, Tay. Uh, we don't have thoughts on Sprouts Market yet. We don't have them here, but we want to go visit one in the near future. Yes, that'll be when we hit the road. When we do Sprouts Farmer's Market, we do Little, we do HEB, Publix, all that good stuff. And somebody else just asked, probably tuned in a little late, about the vegetables. These are Jerusalem artichokes. Yes, Jerusalem artichokes, a.k.a. sunchokes. Absolutely delicious, a cross between a potato and a artichoke, and it tastes great. So, things are chilling, right? If you haven't done so yet, leave a comment down below. If you're so inclined, I have the Super Chat enabled if you want to help donate to the uh, channel and have your chat featured. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Would it be easier to use frozen spinach? Um, yes, it'd be easier, but I really love the flavor of fresh spinach, organic baby spinach. But to be honest, either one's fine. I would use a about a 12 ounce to 16 ounce package of frozen spinach. So somebody developed smell of vision apparently. Ooh, really? Nice. Lisa uh, to us. Kimberly, her crispy Brussels sprouts came out of the oven and OMG, I will admit, I'm a Brussels sprout. I was not a Brussels sprout fan, but now you're gonna eat this entire pan by herself before her family gets any. Kimberly's a believer. She's a Brussels sprout believer. All right, I wanna make a salsa verde. Before I do, I want to check for seasoning on this. You know what? I think we can put, I think we put the whole thing in here, right? There's three of us in there. Let's just put it all in there. So that was $5 worth of organic spinach. And it was cheaper than the one at Target. It's cheaper than the one at Aldi. See, that's why you have to know where to shop. I'd say the best price on organic spinach is at Whole Foods, surprisingly enough, and Costco. Okay, I want to make a quick and easy salsa verde, which is basically a condiment. It's very, very similar to a chimichurri. We're going to pour it over that white fish when it comes out of the oven, and it's going to be fresh and bright and acidic and cut through the fattiness of the fish so, so nicely. Okay, let's see. Oh, we got American Girl Jersey says, I switched out of uh, spray cans to non-propellant oil because of you this weekend. Very, very smart. Never use the spray aerosol bottles. They have chemicals that put them out. Uh, let's see here. Can you do a comparison of milks, soy and plant-based? Yes, Art, what would be the name of that video? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> what a review of nut milks. Oh, it'd be not milk. It'd be not milks, yeah. That's not milk, review. So let's take some of my, on the verge, too old, possibly. Was that 20 minutes already? Dang. What? That's crazy talk. Let me see. Wow, time flies when you're hanging out with the fan. Let Another. me just see if that's ready, because I feel like it needs more time. Call me crazy. Let me see here. I can just tell by feeling the fish. Oh, you know what? It's almost ready. It's a little soft. I'm going to give it a few, a few more minutes. While we're over here, somebody asked, what kind of oils in these Rachel Ray dispensers? Uh, we have avocado oil. We have extra virgin olive oil, regular olive oil, and expeller pressed grapeseed oil. Nice. I love those EVOO dispensers. They're great. So this is doing its thing nicely. I turn it way down to low just to let it finish through. Then we'll check it for seasoning. It's going to need more salt. It's going to need lemon juice, and that's it. Salsa Verde requires a fine shop on some parsley. Have to buy some more. So guys, tomorrow we're filming two videos. One of them is a kitchen basics for how to cook asparagus dressed in a creamy mayonnaise sauce because it's asparagus season right now. And I think steaming or boiling asparagus is really bland, but cooking them in a really hot pan and blistering them and tossing them with a creamy mayonnaise dressing is my favorite way to cook them. Ooh, here's a question. No zesting for the spinach? Uh, no, lemon for the spinach, but talk about perfect timing, homie. Zest for the salsa verde and juice. Come on, when you get the nickname of obsessed with the zest, you can't go too long without zesting. I'd rather keep the zest in something that's fresh and raw 
than cooking it like that. So a little bit of lemon zest in here. And guys, why do we do that? Because it turns out that there's more flavor in the actual zest than the actual juice because in the zest is the essential oils. But you only take the zest up because if you go too deep into the white, this is bitter. It's called the pith. So parsley, lemon zest, lemon juice. And if I'm correct, the only thing you want to be pithy are your comments, yes. right? Yes, well said, Art. Lemon overboard, a little pinch of kosher salt, little crack of black pepper. This is a condiment that's supposed to be really zesty and delicious. A few tablespoons of really good. This is the good extra virgin olive oil from the Olive Oil Club. If you guys haven't tried it yet, this is one of the best EVOOs in the world. Every three months, they send you three bottles from around the world. It's normally about 40 bucks a bottle, but I'm gonna do you guys a favor right now, pull up my promo code. You get a bottle just like that for $1, no strings attached. And I don't make any money on it, I just share it with you guys because it's really good stuff. There you go. Um, we need to add a little bit of heat in there. So let's slice up one red chili here, Art. Maybe a half and one, maybe. You can use red chili flakes if that's all you got. And then we need some capers for some sour tang. And then some Dijon mustard for some more acid. Where do you find these funny t-shirts, the fan asks? Uh, we get them at badpickletshirt.com. They have really cool shirts and they're really fun. Check that out. And then, where's my caper berries at? Right here. So these are the bud of a Mediterranean flower or bush, and they're pickled. And much like an olive or something, it adds a nice salty brine. So imagine all of those flavors in this salsa verde. It's gonna be absolutely lovely. What kind of red chilies are these? These are red Fresno chilies. I love red chilies. I normally buy red finger peppers, but they've been out of them from Whole Foods, and I don't live near the Mexican market, so I can't run over there really quick. But any kind of red, not too spicy chili will do. So Art, stir that up. Or maybe Jeff, can you help him out? Or Millie, help Art stir that for me while I wash my hands. And you probably wanna taste that, uh, Jimmy or Elizabeth, because you want it to be really tart and really zesty. It's meant to be a condiment that cuts through the fat of chicken, beef, or fish, or something like that. Speaking of fish, let me see how our fish is doing. I'm gonna put this here, Art. Now, there's only one way I can really know the fish is ready, and that's to see if the meat flakes. So, I don't mind ruining it a little bit, so I'm gonna go in here, peel away the skin like a doctor, and then if the flesh flakes really nicely on my fork, like that, it's done. Isn't that nice? And keep in mind, it's gonna keep cooking. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's gonna keep cooking. Just because you took it out of the oven, doesn't mean it stops cooking. What is that called, Art? Carryover cooking. Carryover cooking. Explain to people what that is. Uh, oh, hold on, let me put the camera on you so you can explain. Oh, come on. Just because you take it out at a certain temperature doesn't mean it's gonna keep going up. It's cooking on the inside, the outside of it. And so you always want to think about what your final destination is. Take it out a few degrees before then so that you're not going to be at like 170 when you want it to be at 165. Well said, Art. Thank you. Here we go. Let me go back to camera. Thank you. <laughs> and you can see our poor little brains, you know, his eyes aren't so clear now, right, Art? His eyes kind of turned white and popped out of his head. <laughs> now, in addition to letting it carry over cook, I can't cut that open right now and fillet it because it's way too hot. But I can check my salsa verde. Thank you, Millie and everyone for mixing that. Look at that, right? Whoa, whoa, somebody said they lost the sound here. What? Is everybody saying that or not? Can you hear us? I'm sure that's one person. Great stirring art. Art there has a stirring arm like nobody's business. But see how fresh that is? Put that over beef, put that over steak, uh, chicken, pork, that's delicious. I just want to check it. Mmm. Wow. That is so fresh and delicious. I love it. Absolutely love that with a passion. I'm going to push that aside. Okay, people can hear us. That's good. 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 Thank you for checking, Art. So you guys, 
I don't know if you noticed, but like, we're pretty much done with cooking, right? This needs to finish with the spinach. The fish is done. The sunchokes are just about finished cooking through. Oh, we do have to give those a garlic bath afterwards. So really quickly, let me squeeze some lemon juice into my spinach. Come back here. Okay. Uh, how long will the salsa verde last in the fridge? Uh, that'll last for five days in the fridge. Okay. And it'll turn into like a solid piece because the oil will get solid at cold temperatures, but don't worry about it. They'll thaw out when you take it outside. So let me check this for seasoning. Guarantee it's gonna need more salt and or lemon juice. Mm -hmm. More of both, but the garlic flavor is perfect. So a little more salt. You're not gonna do too. A little more butter. Why not, right? Just to make it nice and luscious. And then a little squeeze of lemon juice. You don't want it to be an acidic kind of thing. You want it to be more of like a cutting through the fattiness or elevating the acid just a touch. You don't really want to taste it too much. Yeah, Dana, that's lemon that he's adding. Yes, lemon juice. And by the way, we talk about this this Saturday in the salt video. We have a salt review coming out. What kind of salts to use, when to use them, which ones to avoid. If you want to cut down your salt intake, you can replace salt with lemon juice. Just squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in at the end and it kind of acts like salt. It elevates the flavor because it's acidic. It's really lovely. So let's see here. Look at that art. See garlic chunks everywhere. And that's what you want to eat. Delicious. Perfect. That's where it's at. Mm. Seasoning. Season your food, right? Season aggressively. Otherwise it's bland. That is lovely. Just push that to the side. Millie Sanchez, the, the fish is Branzino. It's a uh, Mediterranean fish. Mm -hmm. It's from Greece. It's a white fish. Absolutely delicious. So before we finish with that, uh, sunchokes, I want to get some garlic and just kind of, you know, I'm just going to smash it. I'm going to treat it like a butter basted steak and I'm going to add a couple cloves of garlic. I'm gonna go into the uh, fridge here. I'm gonna grab some Irish butter and we're gonna bathe that yummy, yummy sunchoke with butter and garlic and treat it just like it were a steak. That's not like a great idea. Hmm. Let's see, Bobby killing it again. Tannis, we try. That's what we do on this channel. We kill, we share, we love, and we eat, right? Hey, Art, ask Bobby what his favorite quick, simple cookbooks are. Uh, my favorite one right now is The Man, The Myth, The Legend. The legend. That's, that's what you need right there. To make meals like that in five minutes is totally insane. Or five ingredients. Yeah, five minutes is a stretch. Yeah, five minutes is a stretch. If I can sell as many copies of my book as Jamie, we're moving to uh, Napa Valley and you're all coming to our vineyard. Put it that way, okay? Trivia question. What kind of shirt did Bobby give Jamie Oliver many, many years ago? Yeah, it was so long ago. All right, check out what's going on here. That was the first time we met Jamie, probably 15 years ago. It was so fun. I'll tell that story. That's funny. So how do I know it's done, you guys? You just take a fork or a knife and you pierce it. If it goes through easily, it's done. These are not done yet, they're still kind of firm. So I'm gonna put it back in the oven. Somebody asked, is this recipe in the cookbook? This one is not. The recipe we did last week is, and I'll do plenty more recipes from the book. Uh, we just had a craving tonight for Branzino, but there is a bunch of seafood recipes in the book. So the book has 50 meal prep recipes. Each one of those has two to three components. And then it has 25 individual keto recipes for a grand total of about 132. We're talking about seafood, shrimp, uh, salmon, chicken, beef, lamb, turkey, pork. We got everything. We got low carb. There's Whole30 in there. There's Paleo in there. I'm telling you guys, I'm so stoked for you to finally see this book on May 15th because the recipes are gangbusters. I know you're going to love them. So help make this a continued number one release by buying the book using the pre-order link down below. That could be like Jamie, me and Jamie. 
So that just needs a few more minutes. I have my garlic chopped. I have my fish there chilling. Let's do a little Q&A in the meantime. Let's see here. Want to take a seat in the meantime, or are you good? I'm good. Okay. Oh, where can I find this fish, says Amna. You can find it always at Whole Foods. It's called Branzino, so just ask around and they'll always have it. Uh, we got Brisbane, Australia. So details are coming like probably early next week, but I'm gonna be in Australia at the end of this month for two weeks. I'll be in Sydney, the Outback, and Melbourne. If you live in Sydney or Melbourne, I'm gonna do a meetup and I'm gonna have you guys hang out and show me where to eat. Cause I am coming to Sydney a few days early before my tour. I'm doing a culinary tour with my friends from Aussie Beef and Lamb. And I want you guys to show me the best spots to hit in uh, Sydney. So stay tuned for that. Let's see here, uh, happy boys. Uh, Whole Foods, Whole Foods always has this fish and it's not expensive. It's 12 to $13 a pound. If I buy one of those at a store or a restaurant, it's $35. So I have $70 of restaurant fish that I just bought at the store for $26. Uh, is this wild or farm raised? Uh, this one is wild. Yeah. Let's see here. Can you treat other herbs like the parsley? You can do cilantro just like that. The other ones won't last as long. Somebody just asked how to pre-order your cookbook. Oh, thank, oh for, Martina just ordered the book. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Um, how do you order, Martina? Oh, down link down below. In the description box, there's a link to Amazon. It's there. Uh, let's see here. Why don't travel to Africa? If they invite me, I will go to Africa. I would love to eat my way across that continent. That'd be amazing. When are you coming to New York City? Hopefully soon. I was there end of last year for work and didn't have time for a meetup, but stay tuned. I'm hoping maybe Art and I can come there together. We'll do a meetup. Maybe some cooking. Let's see. Have you always loved cooking? How do you get inspiration for new recipes? Inspiration's easy. The hard part is finding time to make the recipes, take, uh, test it, and then make a video for it and all that stuff. And uh, I got into cooking because my mom. My mom was a great cook, and she just had me in the kitchen at a very young age and really motivated me to be a home cook. Home cooking is about creating food for your friends and your family and knowing what goes in your body. Let's see, and if you have any questions for Art, please ask Art, who's AKA the most eligible bachelor in Chicago, ladies. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, what up, Isabel? Just pre-ordered the book. Major love, thank you. Somebody just mentioned an Instagram outage, saying that's probably why you don't have more viewers out here. Oh, really, it's an Instagram outage. I don't know about that. I usually don't even uh, advertise it on Instagram. Usually uh, we just rely on you guys here. We got a new subscriber from London. Uh, let's see here. What the hell? Iceland. Ooh, I'd love to go to Iceland and see the Northern Lights. That would be cool. Art rocks. Is art related? A lot of people think art's my brother because if you look at him, we look kind of similar, right? But we're just brothers from another mother. Right, Art? Yep. Yeah, a lot of people on Instagram stories always ask if we're related. a Johnny P question. Oh, is it really? Oh, give us a Johnny P update. Does he come for dinner every night, live close to you? Yes, Johnny P lives a block away from us. He comes for dinner about four nights a week. Johnny P is my dad. Uh, he works out with me at the gym about four days a week. And he has an Instagram cult following. People love the guy because he's stone cold serious. He never smiles and he can eat the best food in the world. And his reaction is always the same. What does he say, Art? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Dad, how's the fish? Very good. How's the pork chops? Very good. <laughs> What's funny? Art? I was reading one of the comments. That's why I laughed and didn't ah, like listen to your question. Let's see here. Uh, interesting. Uh, I got some art. Art love is coming off here. Patricia, what's up, Pat? How's it going, my girl? Uh, hey, Bobby, got any meals planned for us on a bulk? Need to eat a thousand calories, a meal. You know what, Sam? I don't get many requests for those kind of recipes. I'm more of like the weight loss keto guy. I do have a couple of recipes for bulk shred, but they never performed very well. But let me let me think about that. Uh, oh, tell the Jamie Oliver story. Right, right, right. The Jamie Oliver story. So let me check my... Uh, we have a Jamie Oliver story. So about 15 years ago, Jamie was in Chicago, and he was signing books at Marshall Fields at that time. And Art and I went there to meet him. And I watched his show. That looks amazing. I'll get this, Art. I watched his show on 
Food Network called The Naked Chef. And I noticed one time he was wearing a t-shirt from the St. Louis Cardinals, which is the Chicago Cubs arch enemy. And Art and I are huge Chicago Cubs fans. And so I bought him a Chicago Cubs t-shirt and I got in line and I went up to him and I gave him the shirt and he was about to autograph it, thinking I wanted him to autograph it. I'm like, no, 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 I'm like, it's for you. He's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, we were watching Naked Chef and you were wearing a St. Louis Cardinal shirt. And I tried to explain to him that's kind of like, you know, Man U and Chelsea, like the rivalry between those two. And he's like, oh, I had no idea. So I gave it to him. Did he ever wear it? I don't know. Will I get to ask him about that one day when we cook together on YouTube? You knock on wood? Hopefully. That was granted, by the way. That was granted. Hold on, there we go. Thank you, Art. Okay. Um, in my mind, me and Jamie are like BFFs. But in reality, you don't know who I am, right? And he's a cool dude, man. Jamie is a cool dude. How to encourage kids and teens to eat more veg? Well, you know what? A lot of parents tell me, by the way, look at the color in this, you guys. This is sick. That is the definition of golden brown and delicious. Yes, it is. Almost like golden brown and shellacked. Now, is it done, though, is the question. So if I put my fork in here, it still needs more time. You know what? I'm going to let it go another five minutes. We'll do some more Q&A. Um, kids, it's all about what the parents cook and feed them. And I think once you start giving kids pizza and burgers and all that crap, you've lost the war. It's over, right? So... A lot of parents tell me that my recipes are kid approved and like husband approved or wife approved who thinks they hate cauliflower or Brussels sprouts because they're so darn creative. Like you make my cauliflower rice recipes, which there are a ton in my cookbook, you feel like you're eating real rice. So my recipe for keto fried rice is gangbusters. Uh, when you shred cauliflower and turn it into a keto tot, it's amazing. No one knows or cares you're eating vegetables. And if you include the kids in the cooking process too, they're invested. They're going to eat it, man. Just so you know, if you're worried about that fish getting cold, not, not, not. That's going to stay hot for easily 20 minutes because it's a whole fish. There's so much heat, like, bubbling in that skin right now. It ain't going nowhere. Anders from are. Denmark going to bed. Good night. All right. See you, Anders. Anders from Denmark. Uh, Polish cabbage meat rolls, your show. Oh, that sounds good, Ivan. We actually do have a recipe for that. I should make a video because I did one a long time ago. Uh, Jimmy, in the uh, in the skillet is sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, Bobby, what cooking channels do you like on YouTube? Good question, Sam. I like Bon Appetit. I like Jamie Oliver. I love my girl Laura Tally. Um, and I love I love this guy named The Food Ranger and Mark Weens, who do food tours of Asian street food. Freaking awesome, dude. Those guys are rock stars. Uh, Nelly's, she's late, but she loves my Dutch oven. This is the new color from La Crusade. Uh, let's see here. I was, uh, Anders and me think alike. Uh, that no, was exactly what I was saying, the first part. That's the worst than wearing a Cardinal jersey. No, that part I didn't get, but I'm like, that sounded more German to me That's than anything. That's funny, Anders. <laughs> Give me what, what's a Danish accent? Mm, probably similar to Swedish. Probably that wasn't... Anders, is this better? Am I talking more Danish? No, no, no. <laughs> I wasn't saying mine was. <laughs> Are there any superfoods you eat every day? Hell yeah, Jimmy. I have hemp hearts every day. No, no. No, I have reishi mushroom powder every day. Um, I have uh, sometimes quinoa. Um, you got to get some superfoods in every day. And I think putting reishi mushroom powder into a shake is the easiest. All right, I give up, Andrew. I don't, I don't want to offend Anders. I'm just saying, I think there's similarities in the languages, so yeah. please don't be offended <laughs> if I said. Yeah, so Bernadette, Spanish. call around, but Whole Foods always has them in the winter. Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes? Um, yes, Martina, changing the way kids eat in school. And Art and I just got back from Target, and we've been to so many grocery stores lately. Every product in the store that is prepared or processed has sugar, corn, soy, wheat, and dairy. These guys are literally poisoning us with all this sugar they're pouring in there. And these kids get hooked on it. It's really, really sad. If you read the label, like we pulled up a, um, you know, a little a thing of yogurt. It had a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of sugar in one that was maybe twice this size. It was absolutely appalling. I was, I was literally pissed off. Let's see here. All right, sounds good, Andrews. We're gonna go up practice on that. Uh, yeah, soy, soy for the most part is a no-no uh, because it is high in estrogen and it's usually GMO. We got a newbie. Thank you, Margaret. 
Let's see here. Maryland, we've got Maryland crab cakes here. How about Maryland crab cakes with um, filler using almond flour soaked in cream? Yum, yum in the tum-tum, that sounds good. Uh, let's see here. Where can I buy organic quinoa? Should I rinse it before I cook it? Great question. Hey, what's up, Holly? How's it going, girl? Nice to see ya. Um, organic quinoa, the best price ever is at Costco and always rinse it. Yes, it has kind of like dirt and residue on there and sometimes it rocks. How often do you drink your turmeric juice? I drink it five nights a week. Flav City Immune Tea. Google it. It is the best tea to drink in the cold weather to keep you strong and fight off a bug. Do you eat meat often? Not as much as I used to. I probably only eat red meat once a week now. And I always eat grass fed. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. What else are we see here? There's a question about how many recipes in the cookbook. 125 plus. I yeah, believe. 125 plus keto recipes that will keep you busy meal prepping and planning forever. I'm telling you, when you guys see this book, you're going to love it. You're going to leave reviews on Amazon. It's going to get hopefully mass market appeal. We'll go on that, that culinary uh, book tour. We'll do signings. We'll do pop-ins, cooking, cook-alongs, all that good stuff. Maybe the Flav City reality bus tour. Yeah, we'll do the Flav City reality bus tour. What is better, garlic in the bottle that is diced or fresh garlic? Art? You always want to go with fresh garlic. Yeah, you guys, buy fresh garlic. The flavor is always superior. They pack diced garlic and peeled garlic in uh, preservatives. And there's a Netflix documentary right now called Rotten. A lot of that pre-peeled garlic comes from Chinese prisoners. And they import it here, which is highly illegal, but they skirt the law and they get around it with shell companies. It's don't terrible. say the, Don't say the name. Yeah, I won't say the name. I don't want to get sued. All right, get over here. So now is the magic time. Look at the color on those beautiful, beautiful, mm. Sun chokes. Remember, guys, this is a sun choke, aka Jerusalem artichoke. It's a member of the tuber family. And I'm just going to put a little knob of butter right there. Oh, yeah. And maybe one more small one right there. And I'm, I pretty much cook this thing like a steak. We seared them in a hot cast iron pan. We roasted them in the oven. Then we take them out and we spoon hot butter all over the top. If I had some fresh thyme, that'd be amazing. I don't, but you know, I'm just gonna put a little bit of parsley in here too. But this is how we roll, right? And while that butter melts, we spoon it over. How do you spoon it with a fork? Right? <laughs> that would be interesting with this. And You'll it. figure it out. I'll, I'll get her down. So, do a video on Target products. Well, why well, do you mention course. that? What's gonna happen uh, pretty soon, Art? I would say we just got back a few hours ago from doing that. Just got back from Target. We did a really cool haul video there. And we also went to Fresh Time Market. So we got that coming. Target was so interesting because it did have a couple of really cool items, but Target is a lesson in reading labels because the stuff in these products, if you don't look and know, is shockingly bad. So all right, look what I'm doing here. I'm taking the pan, I'm tilting it, I'm browning the butter, and I'm basting my artichokes. And that garlic is infusing the butter. And it's, this is the same thing you do to a steak. What do the French call this, Art? Buh, buh something? No, you're cooking with a lot of buh. <laughs> it's automatically French if you add that amount of butter. And of course we use grass-fed butter because it's healthier and tastier and has more fat than American watered down butter. You, Will you come to Cake Cod for a signing tour? Please. That would be amazing. Cape Cod. Can we wait for the summertime? And you can set up like a clam bake? Because that sounds like it'd be unbelievable. All right, we'd be down with that one, right? Yep. Some people want a cast iron clinic. You know what? I want to come out with a... Would you guys ever be interested in buying Flav City kitchen utensils, like pots and pans? Because I wouldn't do the whole like big line, but maybe like the most essential kitchen gear, like cast iron pan, knife, cutting board microplane or a zester or something like that wow somebody just said how do you clean your microplane i find it very difficult really no 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 as soon as you're done using it just run it under cold water or whatever leave it in the sink and then put hot soapy water over it it's super that reminds easy. me of a mitch hedberg joke really? right 
He says, I got a cheese grater. That's its positive name. Nobody ever calls it by its negative name, which is sponge ruiner. Sponge ruiner? Fine. Yeah, when you're cleaning it, you want to go against the grain, not with it. Otherwise, you kind of grate your sponge. Okay. Pretty, pretty exciting here. So, yes, yeah, so what are people saying about, yes, I would buy, I would buy, be very interested, cast iron rocks. All right, cool. Because I think, like, we do the Flav City Kitchen Basics recipes. What if we had Flav City Kitchen Basics gear? Like, not a big thing. Like, not everyone needs, you know, like, um, a salt grinder or, like, uh, you know, 500 pans. But you need a splatter guard. You need a pan. You need a knife. And I think it'd be really cool. So let me see what I can do regarding that. Let me get some water. What else we got, Art? Somebody asked if you're married. Yeah, hello. The lovely and talented Desi. Somebody, uh, 10 years. somebody um, asked, do you only buy American-made cast iron? Um, no, I buy American-made, but I also have a pan from France, from Stobe. I have a pan from Michigan, from the a really cool company. Le Creuset back there. Yeah, I have a Le Creuset cast iron pan right here from France. So no, I buy it from U.S. and France. The difference is about $170. You know, the French cast iron pans, not this one, is $170. This large one right here is $40. Lindsay is thanking you for the confidence that you've given her through your cooking videos. Awesome, Lindsay. I love to hear that. Absolutely love it. So let's let's dismember this fish, right? <laughs> I was thinking of a nicer way to say it, but there ain't a nicer way. So I'm gonna get this is another Flav City basic. You need a fish spatula because it doesn't just come in handy for fish, it comes in handy for everything. It's so awesome. I love it. So what we have to first do is, sorry guy, I call this Ned Starking the fish. Art wouldn't know what that means because he doesn't watch Game of Thrones, but you kind of have to just get rid of the head a little bit. That way it makes room to fillet the fish. Okay, I'm standing too close to a really hot iron head. Oh, it's really, let, me, let me move that, hold on, let me move that. No, I'm gonna move over here. Okay, okay. okay. I smell garlic and I feel <laughs> Now, to help the fish come up, I make an incision by its spine, and I come down like that. That'll help me raise it. So right here where the fin is, which I asked the fish guy to remove that, but he didn't. I just make a little incision and come down. Now the goal here is to remove the fish from the spine. So I'm also gonna kind of chop off the tail here. And then I'll put this knife away. It should really just open up like a book. So let me just move this one over a little bit. So here's what you do, right? So I, I raised it from there. I'm gonna just come down right here. Should I go on that side or not? Uh, no, we're gonna open it right towards you right now. So try to get, feel the spine in there and just open it up. See, it's still sticking here a little bit. There we go. Like that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And then, this is my Tom and Jerry moment. <laughs> you just pick out the spine. Look at that. It's like that Tom and Jerry where it's like this. Run it through your hair. Yeah. It's a comb, right? <laughs> right? And look what happened. All of those yummy aromatics did their work. They seasoned the fish beautifully. So let's show that again, Art. So what we do is maybe for this one. Yeah, come on this side, Art, for this one. So I'm going to show you. For this one here. I'm gonna actually grab my knife again and see how it's kind of sealed there. I just wanna open it. This allows me to open up the fish like a book. And then remember, there's a spine right here. So I work in my spatula and I feel, okay, right there is the resistance. So I kind of open it a little more. All right, look right here. See the spine right there? So I'm kind of going around it a little bit and then boom, I open it just like that. Isn't that crazy? It takes a little bit of practice, and yes, you're gonna mangle a fish here and there, but buying a whole fish is cheaper and tastier because if you cook an individual filet or a fillet, if you live in the UK, it's very easy to overcook this. It's so hard to overcook a whole fish because the bones are in there, the skin is in there, it has a lot more moisture. So, let's plate up. One of these guys here? Yes, Patricia H. The fish is from Whole Foods. Yes. It's a Whole Foods Branzino. Each one of these whole fish was $13. 
I've been to numerous, re numerous restaurants where one of these fish is $35. So you can see the difference right there. Do you have these live streams every Wednesday? Well, Art and I are gonna start doing them every Wednesday or Thursday. So stay tuned on my community page. I'll let you know. Um, so the plan going forward is a live stream every Wednesday or Thursday and two videos on the weekend. So three videos a week. We went from one video a week to three now. And I hope you guys really, really appreciate it. But yeah, it's we're, we're never sure until a, a day or two before if it's gonna be Wednesday or Thursday. So just stay tuned on the channel. Okay, so I wanna get rid of any connective issues right there. Pick it up, move it right here. Be careful, it's gentle, right? Think of it like a woman. There are bones in this fish, just so you know, you gotta be careful. Okay, then we'll take, let me wash my hand. We'll take some of the yummy sun chokes here that are cooked in butter and garlic. Are there any more bones after removing the sponge? Yes, there are bones in here. They're actually all over. Not terrible, but you have to be careful. Okay, that looks great. Then we'll come back yonder. Come back here, RDO. Let's put a scoop of this. You guys, this was 16 ounces of organic baby spinach. Wilt it down into that. Isn't that goofy, man? It is so crazy, but yes, you could use frozen spinach if you want. Okay, we're not done yet. Art, switch with me again. Now we get pretty, right? Now we take a little bit of parsley and just garnish on the dish. But don't forget, Art and you guys, Patricia, Millie, Luna, we still got our salsa verde. We got our zesty salsa verde that has extra virgin olive oil, lemon juice, lemon zest, chilies, stone ground mustard, um, salt, pepper, and what else? One, uh, caper berries. Oh, I forgot garlic. There's supposed to be a bit of garlic in here, you guys. Uh -oh. Let's, you're supposed to put one clove of grated garlic. So I'm just gonna grate that in here. Okay. Are you Italian? I am not Italian, no. My lineage is Croatian, Ukrainian, and Lithuanian. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Yeah. So then we take this and spoon it right on the fish. Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine is not weak. And just for shits and giggles, let me chop up a little red chilies. So what does that do? The salsa verde, it cuts through that richness and that oiliness of the fish. And it's just absolutely beautiful. Put that chili there. Jamie Oliver uses chilies, I use chilies. You guys, give me some love. Give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs up and raise the roof for oven roasted pranzino with a zesty salsa verde, pan roasted sun chokes bathed in garlic and butter, and spinach cooked in olive oil and lots of garlic. Okay, we've been on now for how long, Art? 63 minutes. So an hour. Obviously you can do it quicker. We've been hanging out, we've been shooting the stuff, having a good old time, but this kind of meal is brasserie, restaurant quality, way, way cheaper. I say this plate cost me right here, I'll tell you what, this plate cost me half of a fish, so it cost me $6.50, plus about $2 of sunchoke, so $8.50, plus that is about $2. $9.50, nine $9.50, plus the salsa verde, $10. $10 for this. Mm. In a restaurant, $30 to $40, easily, easily. One fan said she just fainted seeing this fish. Lord <laughs> mercy, someone get us some water. Get the, get the girl some water. Get up very slowly. <laughs> Breathe. And Whoever has a hard time cleaning their microplane, I just run some water on it now. I'll let it sit here, but later on, just take your sponge and go against the grain with some soap. It ain't rocket science, baby. Okay, let's try a bite of this, and then Art's gonna join me. Can I use bass for a cheaper alternative? Yes, you can, but it's different. Sea bass is a thicker fish, but totally gonna work. Just get a whole fish. So, you know what? I want to try the sun choke so bad. So, I'm gonna, look at this. When you roast it like that, 
That's what happened. Look at that. It's really soft and mashable, but it's caramelized like a steak. So, amazing. You have to try that. That is the bomb. As for the fish, see how it just flakes like that? Totally beautiful. That's the texture of the fish. Wow. Flavor city, you guys. That is ridiculous. And then as for the spinach, mmm, like garlic. And that lemon juice is so bomb. So everything here is keto, but you want to limit the um, sun chokes because they're a little higher in starch. It's paleo. It's whole 30. Absolutely delicious. This is phenomenal. All right, I think it's time for some more Q&A and for my homie Art to take a seat. So Art. Yeah, somebody was asking where my plate is. That's always the joke. The choke's on me, right? I always get to <laughs> no, eat last. No, 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 never, never. Yeah, let's throw this on selfie style here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we'll do some eat along here. Let's be careful that doesn't fall off. Yeah. Yep. You sit there, yeah, right? I said, right. And uh, did I bring him a knife and fork for you? I don't think you did. Yeah, grab one for you. Oh, how awesome was that, you guys? Come on. All right. I mean, we created this meal in real time. This wasn't like swap outs. We're not flopping turkeys, not flopping here. turkeys here. This is real cooking. This is elevated cooking. These are the kind of recipes you can expect to find in the cookbook, which I can't wait to share with you on May 15th. But like I said, if you want to pre-order now, you can do it with the Amazon link down in the description box. You guys have already made it a number one new release on Amazon, but I want it to keep going. Oh, let's see here. Do another grocery haul video. They're so informative. Lewis, we just filmed today, Fresh Time Market and Target. And this weekend is a salt haul from Whole Foods. First time having this fish. Oh, really good. Newbie. Um, first time having one what? of these. So, yeah. First time spinach too? I've had spinach. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, Art's a newbie. He's a Branzino virgin. That's good. Isn't that good, man? Mm. So, Delicious. I'll bet, I mean, let me know if you have ever made Branzino before because it's not the kind of fish most people make. They might get it out and about, especially in Greek town, but it's so easy to make and it's so darn cheap. And you know what goes in it. Most restaurants don't use um, high quality, um, salt, like me, wherever my pink salt is from um, Utah, they don't use very good quality extra virgin olive oil. They might use canola oil to pan sear the, uh, the Jerusalem artichokes. What restaurants, to be honest, cook with ghee like that? I don't know. Not, it's too expensive. They're not going to do it. And they're using refined, processed canola oil. Man, how good are those artichokes? Oh, my God. You guys. Very good. I sound like Johnny P. <laughs> Very good. So good. Um, Holly, I wish you were eating this too. We would totally share with you. Holly's my girl from Madison, a fellow badger. Will you do an ice cream segment, not yogurt or non fat? Yeah, I think for summer we should do three sugar free ice cream flavors. That'd be good. When are you going to HEB grocery store? All right, when are we going? Uh, hopefully soon, right? Yeah, we're going to go on the road. We're going to go to Texas and do H-E-B while we're down there. And then we're going to do Central Market. And then we got to find the closest little to Chicago. I think it might be Ohio or something, right? I don't know. Yeah, we'll check that out. Debbie, you got to. You guys, I, I can't even estimate to you guys how good these Jerusalem artichokes are. They're just heavenly. And I think this is a cool dish because it has two or three components that most people have never had. Oh, right. They most, most people have not cooked or had branzino or artichokes yep. that are Jerusalem. Yeah, they got an interesting flavor to them. Mm -hmm. It's very unique. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice texture on the outside and then uh, can't put a handle on it. So mm -hmm. It's unique. I've got a couple of bones. It's got to be careful. Mm. I probably wouldn't give this fish to kids. There's too many bones in it, but it's so good. I wish you were here too, Bernadette. Mm. They have little in London. <laughs> I would like to go to London again. Okay. It's been... Wow. It's been a long time. Yeah, I haven't been there probably in five years. 2,000 for me. 2,000? Yeah. 
Are you serious? All right. We got to get a British sponsor here because it's been way too long for art. Way and too long. And for whoever's from London, love yeah. that city. Can we just get a oh, super chat? Abby. Nice. Abby, you're so sweet. Thank you. Abby just gave us a buck 99. Thank you for supporting the channel. Anytime we do a live stream, you could donate via the super chat. It's a great way to support the channel and help us uh, do more things with the channel and have your comment highlighted like Abby's. So thank you. Where did you get the fish and artichokes? Art? Whole Foods. Uh-huh. Uh, staple pretty much across most of the Whole Foods, I imagine. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They always have them. Would you come to California and check out rallies? They are doing a lot of organic now. Have you heard of Rally? There's a fast food burger joint called Rally's. I don't think it's the same one, right? Yeah, I've never heard of that. But I think we're, I want to come to- Rally's, maybe. Rally's, yeah. Well, we're going to do Sprouts Farmer's Market, which I know they have in Cali. But let me add that one to my list. Thank you. Let's see here. This fish is wild caught. Yes, it is wild caught. Uh, we got a keto newbie. Is all cheese good to eat? Um, yeah, basically all fresh cheese is. Some are lower in uh, starch and carbs than others. I would say brie cheese is the most low carb, but even like a quarter cup of cheddar cheese has like one carb. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. Millie, you can use red snapper. It'd be lovely. Best place to buy custom spices in Chicago. The coffee and tea exchange in Lakeview or Old Town Spice House in Old Town. Or go to the uh, the Whole Foods bulk section. I have phenomenal spices for not expensive at all. Would you do a video in a grocery outlet? What's that? Hmm. Bobby, I'm about to make spaghetti for dinner. How should I spice it? Spaghetti, that's a very like open-ended question. What kind of spaghetti are we talking? Meat sauce, red sauce, olive oil sauce. Give me some more info, Sammy boy. Do you guys learn to cook as a child or later as an adult? Uh, I learned to cook as a child with my mom. How about you, Art? Um, I tended to learn later in life. Watched my mom cook a lot, but never really uh, had any confidence until later on when I started paying more attention and learning. I think it's really cool when you get involved in the kitchen with your mom or your dad, because it piques your curiosity. And then it empowers you to start making your own food. There's something really cool about making something out of nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Art and I are artists who can paint a picture like Desi. I can't like uh, put together even a Rubik's Cube, to be honest, right? But I can create beautiful dishes that are good for you out of nothing. And then I know what goes into my body. I feel really good about eating this. Whereas if you go out, you don't know what they're putting in there. And nine times out of 10, it ain't good. And it could be as simple as the salt they use. Most salt is bleached and refined and processed. We're using raw, unrefined salt. No restaurant cooks with that. That's crazy talk, man. Uh, let's see here. Mm. Do you think wild caught fish makes a difference? Um, I don't actually, Lewis. Um, for salmon, I often buy, okay there? Yeah, I dropped some fish. Oh. <laughs> Bone. I often buy uh, farm raised from, from Whole Foods because it's Norwegian, very high quality fish. The nutrition is a little less than wild caught, but it's just as good quality. But it's actually fattier, which I love. See, Luna's teaching her daughter to cook, and that's very important. Very good. Uh, also, do a salt segment when and why to use fine versus coarse. Coming Saturday. There we go. It's so all about salt. Salt, salt, salt. All about timing, too. That's right. Question pink salt, we, we talk answers. about pink salt, too. Uh, Celtic salt, we talk about that, too. Stay tuned. Uh, uh, will you be grilling out the season? It's kind of hard for us to film outside because of the lighting and walking back and forth, but let us see what we can do. I'd like to do some grilling segments, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Ben. Yeah, Old Town Spice is amazing. Have you shopped at Woodman's? Art has, right? I've been to Woodman's. Huge. You almost need to, like, make it a day trip. Um, any tips on overcooking chicken or undercooking chicken? Yes, get a probe thermometer, a digital probe thermometer from Polder, Amazon. Polder probe thermometer, you stick it into the middle, it tells you the exact temperature so you never have to overcook chicken again. That's better advice than I was going to give. Or you're sad. Don't do it. <laughs> Watch my video, Flav City Chicken Breast. Shows you how to make the perfect chicken breast every time. 
How do you feel about cheese substitutes? Um, I feel great. I use them very often. I found a couple that melt really well. I like so delicious. Um, Daya is okay too. Art is not a huge fan <laughs> of cheese substitutes. He likes real cheese. He likes real milk. He likes real, uh, yeah, real yogurt. He asked me when I show him almond milk. He says, "Do almonds have nipples?" Right? <laughs> teats. Teats. Yeah. Do they have a teat? What movie is that from? Uh, meet the parents. Meet the parents. Yeah. Meet the parents. Yeah. Oh, there is one non-milk that I officially approve of, but maybe they'll have to wait till that episode comes out. When we film today, we can spoil it. It's okay. okay. <laughs> There's a brand called Malk. Yeah. And if you're a Simpsons fan, maybe you know where I'm coming from, because yes, I do appreciate the Simpsons. So. I forgot that episode completely. Let's do it. Look Compl it up. Completely. Mm -hmm. Can you recommend a good kitchen scale? Mm hmm. A digital one. You want one that's digital, and I would recommend. This one, this one's from OXO. Good in grams and ounces, and it's from OXO. I thought I had the phone on, do not no, disturb. I don't know, that okay. thing is gonna fall off. I'm gonna move it. Okay. Oh. Hopefully our room's still there. Yes. Uh, let's see, how good is Kerrygold cheese? You know, I haven't had the cheese, but it comes from grass-fed cows, so I'm guessing it's pretty darn good. Thank you so much, Mrs. Marbles. New subscriber, and she's loving it. Let's see here. Luna likes real cheese too, Art, she says. Right. Yeah, if you can't eat real cheese, well so then that's a simple thing, but yes. if you can. Wow, Joy makes homemade cheese and yogurt. That's pretty cool. Now it looks really grainy, no? Oh yeah, that's weird. Huh, strange. Mm. Is your guys' picture grainy or is it just me now? There was an incoming phone call that kind of interrupted yeah. the broadcast. Um, Patricia buys spices separate now and use your recipe blends. That's the way to go. For a food quality maple syrup, which is high in sugar, what can I substitute for? Um, maple syrup substitute? Well, the thing is, there are keto sugar-free maple syrups, so you might want to go that route, um, but there really is no substitute per se. Oh, nice art. Oh, good. Thank you, guys. Margaret, Sandra, appreciate that. The two-year age Kerrygold is amazing, says Kippy. Very cool. Uh, so this weekend, Saturday, we have the salt video. Sunday, we have, uh, what's Sunday? The pork chop? No, it's, uh, I'm forgetting this. Oh, mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Avocado oil mayonnaise. That is higher quality than anything you can buy in the store. And it's about half the price. Uh, then next week, we'll probably do maybe a pork chop video. We have the Target video that could launch. And then today, Art and I filmed the Target haul and the Fresh Time haul. So we got a lot of good stuff we're filming ahead. Stay tuned for live streams every Wednesday or Thursday. Just check the community board on my channel to know which one. Let's see here. Sam just got noodles, hamburger, and some generic pasta sauce for spaghetti. How do I spice it up? Art? Where's the question? Ah, uh, Sam right here. You got... Some noodles, hamburger meat, and generic pasta sauce. What should you do? Uh, season it well. Uh, what do you recommend? Uh, yeah, Sam, I would saute onions and garlic with oregano and chili flakes. Add the beef. Add some tomato sauce to that after the beef browns. Salt and pepper. Let it simmer for 20 minutes. Boil the pasta. Toss the pasta in the sauce. Cook it for two minutes over medium heat, really shaking the pan, stirring it. Add cheese, stir it, it gets really nice and saucy, and it's done. Do you have any garlic in what you just said? I don't yes, I said garlic, yes. You have to do garlic. Uh, I have a pesto, Millie. I have a cool pesto in the book. I have two, one with pecans, one with walnuts, and um, one has parsley and basil, and I think one has mint and basil. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm so excited to see a new video posted. I realize it's live. Ah, uh, yeah. Stay tuned because if you can really check the community tab, you can see when we're going live. It's going to be every Wednesday and Thursday. I don't think we can really predict which day it's going to be it's because we're always like either out and about shooting or shooting recipes. Like we did it today and I can't do it tomorrow because we're shooting an asparagus video and a turkey meatball video. 
Uh, it's gonna be a Bobby's Basics, how to cook the best asparagus because it's asparagus season now. And I made turkey meatballs and posted the picture on my community page on Monday. And you guys said, please make the recipe and I will because they're phenoms. Oh, let's see. Can't wait to buy the book. Where do I pre-order? Link down below in description box, Millie. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. How did Art and I meet? You guys know so much about nutrition. How do we meet Art? Mutual friend. Yeah, mutual friend. Fr friends with Bobby. I was friends with him. And yep. then uh, the rest is history, hanging out. How do we know so much about nutrition? Wow. Yeah. You, you seem to know a lot. How did, where did that come from? Just general interest, right? General interest. I want to know. You are what you eat. I want to know what goes in my body. I want to know about ingredients and labels. It's really not hard. You just got to put the time into it. But that's what you got me for. That's what you got art for. We help you out. You don't worry about it. Uh, did Whole Foods prep and clean the Branzino for me? You're damn straight they did. <laughs> yes, indeed. Make sure to ask for that. Uh, good call, Joy. Joy said some red wine, oregano, cayenne, salt, and pepper. Yeah, if you want to deglaze the pan with red wine after you uh, cook the beef, then add the tomato. That'd be great. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Organs in the house. Uh, thank you so much, Anne's. Asparagus soup. That sounds grand. I love that. Really, really yummy. Uh, let's see here. Did you start originally eating keto for your own weight loss? So I didn't eat it for weight loss. I ate it because it makes me feel good. A keto and paleo diet for me is non-inflammatory and it makes me feel really, really good. I don't worry about weight loss. What's your view on gluten? My view on gluten is to avoid it because I tested slightly intolerant for it and I believe it's inflammatory to your body, so I avoid it. But Art, I eat it. I Art has no gluten, problem with it. Gluten's been good to me. Yeah, if you can get good gluten from like wheat that is not processed and refined, like there's a place in Chicago called Public and Quality Bread. They use like ancient grains wheats that are really high quality. I'm for that. But the commercial gluten and wheat they use now is really, really processed. Uh, let's see. What's the best way to cook a steak? Art? Uh, I think my favorite way is grilled, but if you're going to do it indoors, um, cast iron pan, reverse searing is often nice if your steak is thick enough. Yes. Um, if it's thick enough, the odds are you're probably going to get the outside really nice and charred. The inside will eventually get to the way you want it if you put it in the oven, but you're going to have a really thick gray band between the nice, if you like medium rare, the nice pink center and the outside. So. Uh, good technique is doing the reverse sear, but sous vide was probably one of the uh, juiciest mm. steaks I've had. So if you got sous vide and you're into that, do that and then give it a quick sear and it's yeah. money. Well, can they watch those videos? I think you did a very famous episode all about that. Mm -hmm. You search Flav City, how to cook steak. We have a great video that put a lot of work into it. It's four techniques for making a steak. And it is a lot of work to just eat steak all day long. All day yeah, long. you thought it was going to be easy. I thought it was that hard. was going to be the easiest job ever. <laughs> um, do we have a sweet tooth? I don't really have a sweet tooth. I do. You do? Oh, yeah. You think of us a legit sweet tooth? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've never heard of icorn pasta. Pasta. Icorn pasta? Never heard of that. Mm. Buckwheat. Yeah, buckwheat is gluten free. Um, I don't eat it too much, but I think it's a good substitute. Uh, do I believe in bottled water or reverse osmosis high pH water? I believe in high pH water. This is it. Underneath our sink, we have a reverse osmosis uh, alkaline water filter, and I swear by it. I think it tastes better, and it keeps your body uh, low on acid. What was that? A timer what was? I don't know. It's a mystery. It's, it's a mystery. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. In corn. I still don't know what that is. Mm. Let's see. What's the best way to cook brown rice? Um, I would use less brown rice, um, less water than most people call for because it makes for soggier rice when you use two to one oh, ratio. Ancient grain. That high corn. Oh, it's an ancient grain. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh. Keto lava cake. Ooh, that's a tough one, sister. Wow. Uh, oh, you, you're late, Sky. Set a reminder, you guys, if you want to get a push notification, subscribe to the channel, which you all are, but also hit the bell icon. So below this video right here, or there should be a bell icon. If it's not on this video, it's going to be on another one and you can get a push notification. So the question is, how did you guys get notified? We went live today. 
Did it push you on the app when we went live? Did you get an email this morning? Did you get a push 30 minutes before? Because really, we really have no idea how people know. And I wish YouTube would do a better job of notifying people, to be honest. Uh, almost all of our recipes, Lewis, are gluten-free, sugar-free. Almost every recipe we do, and every, re every recipe from the cookbook is gluten-free, sugar-free, 100%. Brita filter is not okay. That does not do enough. So you saw it on Instagram, okay. When I got on YouTube, your video was on top. Yeah, I prefer a push notification. That's not good enough, right? Yeah. That's whack, man. It got pushed to your iPhone and the bell notified me too. Good. I think my favorite would be a YouTube recommendation, but- uh, Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, what's up, Lily? Ordered the book. Hi, Thayum. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. You're so sweet. Uh, Vanita got a pop-up. So it's like, it's a total mix. Some people get a pop-up, some people get an email, some people don't get nothing. So make sure you push the bell icon on my videos. That's the only way to really get a push notification. And watch the Instagram stories because uh, yes. that's going to be, if there's going to be one of these, there's going to be a link out there. Yes, good point. Swipe up. Do you have a protein bar recipe? I don't have a protein bar recipe. I like RX bars. Art likes RX yeah, bars good. too. Those are good. The best price ever is at Walmart. Very, very good. Although your mom just got them on sale where? Mariano's? I think Mariano's had yeah. to buy a box of 12 for 12 bucks. A I bucket bought case. a bar for no, RX. No, 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 no. That was a different one. Take that back. Oh, yeah. Oh, it wasn't RX? No, that wasn't RX. Oh, was strange. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I usually get a notification from my phone when other people go live. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, info on beans, please. So beans are something you really want to soak overnight and pressure cook because that way you cook them all the way through and you get rid of the lectins in the beans. There's a lot of information about lectins out there. It's a protein that binds um, to the actual uh, bean itself, and it can be really bad for your body, but if you pressure cook it, uh, you get rid of the lectins. Scotty likes beans, don't you, Scotty? Scotty likes beans. <laughs> you were waiting for that one, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank Angela. Ordered my book today. Angela, high five. High five. So we're going to do more. I haven't even told anyone on Instagram yet about the book. Zero. I have not. And okay. I, I'm waiting a little bit. Right. We've told YouTube. I told the Flav City community on, uh, oh, it's this art. That's what it was. Oh, shoot. Ah, I knew there was a buzzing noise somewhere. <laughs> I told, uh, there's a Flav City uh, member group on, it, on, on Facebook you can join. I haven't told many people, so I'm hoping that I'll do it in little waves. If we're already a number one new release, once I start announcing to everyone, you can get up there and stay there and be number one new release in keto, weight loss, number one right now in allergens. So really cool stuff. Number one in everything. How do we email you? Um, you go to the uh, channel page and click contact here or go to Instagram and say contact and send an email. Let's see. I need to know about reverse osmosis. Will you do a video? I won't do a video about that, but I would just Google search on it. I would highly recommend alkaline water that is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is a purification system. Yes, okay, correct. So yeah, alkaline is separate. Alkaline, alkaline so the reverse alkaline. osmosis purifies the water. Then it goes through a set of minerals that are beads. It alkalizes the water and it makes the pH around nine. Really good stuff. Oh, Tonathia is ordering today. Woo woo, thank nice. you so much. You're so, you guys are so sweet. Hey, and Vanita pre-ordered yeah. my cookbook and can't wait to get my hands on it. Hi, Faya. You guys rock, thank you. I want to go keto, any advice? My advice, Katie, is that it's easier than you think. And my advice is to cook your own meals. If you go out, they're gonna sneak cornstarch, wheat, and gluten into your meal, and they're gonna put bad fats like canola, sunflower, safflower, and corn oil. Cook your own meals, meal prep, and you'll be good to go. Which is why our book is called Keto Meal Prep Recipes because we want to help you meal prep for the week to take those hard decisions away from you and take bad decisions away from you when you get hungry. Simple as that. Oh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Katie, needs to seriously lose weight, so that's why I want to go on keto. You're going to do it. I'm telling you, Katie. It's easy. Uh, Drone, just discovered this channel. Everyone in the chat support each other help each other grow, exactly. That's what this community is all about. We're all about helping each other, support. There's no hate on this channel. We cook food. What is there to hate about, right? Although we find some haters here and there. Yeah, here and there. We do. Uh, let's see. Oh, Holly's drinking out of her Flav City nice. mug right now. She bought some of the merch. Thank you, Holly, that is so sweet. We're gonna have a lot of new merchandise coming up soon. Now that the book work is almost out of the way, we're gonna have some new t-shirts designed. 
uh, and sell those right below. But thank you so much. So yeah, Holly's drinking out of the Flav City mug right now. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, steak sauce. How do you feel about steak sauce? All right. Uh, <laughs> salt and pepper on a steak is fine with me. Unless it's a pan sauce. Yeah. But uh, like a bottle of steak sauce. Yeah. Anyone may be how steak is done, but not my steak. Yeah. Um, Baja, California. If we do go there, you'll be the first to know, and we're going to crush some Baja fish tacos for sure. Oh, one of my favorite. Uh, let's see. If I go out to eat, what is your recommendation then? Uh, to know what you're eating. Go to places that have locally sourced food and that are starch or keto friendly. What's so funny here? Anders is back. Can oh, sleep? Anders? And he hates your Danish accent. Oh, Anders, <laughs> go to sleep, Anders. You can't be up anymore. That's Irish, wasn't it? <laughs> Just stop. It's 1.30 in the morning where Anders is. Anders, it is 1.30. You need to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hello from Australia. Hello, Holly. Details soon, but I'll be in Australia in two weeks in Sydney, Melbourne, and the Outback, and I want to meet you. Uh, Hello from Virginia. Just signed on to this. I really enjoy your work. Muchas gracias. Are cup for cup flowers keto? No, they're not keto at all, but they're very good gluten-free flour mixes. Oh, let's see here. A bit of EVOO on a steak is good. I'm all about that, Joy. EVOO on everything. I'm all about that. Let's, <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> all right, you guys. Before the fish gets super cold, we're going to plate it up. Serve some to Art and Desi. I hope you had an amazing time. Share this video with your friends as soon as we're done. Thank you for buying the cookbook. If you want to do it and you haven't done so yet, I'll put the Amazon link down in the description box. Saturday, Art and I have the salt video. Sunday, we have the avocado mayo video. And every Wednesday or Thursday, we're gonna do a live cooking stream. So stay tuned to my community tab. Subscribe and push that bell icon right down below so you really get the notification. What were you gonna say? Anders, we may have a Danish accent at some point. Yes. Now, now that we know we've been challenged by yeah. our homework. <laughs> give I me, I might. Just give me some time, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, thank you, Katie. Thank you, Luna. Uh, Ana, Holly, muchas gracias a todos. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. We had a great time as always. Art and I will see you very soon. But for now, we leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love 